Um, if you guys watched my last video, you would have seen that I attempted suicide. Woo! I had some of Justin Elder's, um, I had some of Justin Elder's, um, pepper powder, and holy crap. Holy crap, was it hot. Um, like a whole new level. The good news is, I have one of the videos already up. The bad news is, something got screwed up when I reviewed the second one. And I don't know what happened to the video file, but it's gone. I can't, I thought I saved it. I can't find it anywhere on my laptop. I'm going to do a more detailed search. But seeing how this laptop is brand new, if I can't find it in the couple files I've already been saving stuff, I got doubts I'm ever going to find it or that I saved it. Something must have happened, which is a bummer. Um, I want to say, Justin, Ghost Pepper, I'll, I'll do the review in this. Um, I know you wanted to see my reaction to losing my mind, but hopefully you can just watch that Maruga video twice because that's basically what it was. Um, so the Ghost Pepper was good, but it was just hot. There was no real taste. Um, the Ghost Pepper, to me, has always been overrated. I feel like it's got a ton of heat and it's got no flavor. Um, that Maruga was good. There was like a smokiness to it. Um, and I think I said in the review there was like a wood taste to it. But it was it was good. It was like an earthy... Um, almost like, like a bourbon barrel. Like woody taste. Like maybe maple? Um, is that, I think that's what they put in the bourbon barrels. But it was really good. Um... It burns so bad. Uh, I cannot tell you how much I am afraid of the second burn that's going to occur tomorrow morning. Um, there is a solid chance, brother, you are going to hear me at Louisville, Kentucky screaming. Because, Jesus, dude, that was hot. So, two thumbs up. That she's a great job on those powders. Uh, I was intrigued when you said you were going to send me powder because I was wondering how it was going to turn out. But, I mean, it looked professional. Other than, it, you know, it came in the dime bags. The actual powder and consistency looked very professional. Being serious, dude. Um, so I think you did a great job. I don't know what you do. Probably dehydrate it and then um, grind it up. But kudos, my man. It was great. So that's the pepper review. Um, second thing, what's going on? I finally freaking brewed my Irish Red. It was great. Um, I had a couple issues here and there. One, the blow-off tube on it got clogged and it blew the top right off of my fermenter so my fermenter was probably uncovered for about eight hours so here's my thoughts i've already asked a couple of you guys but i really want to save the yeast from that you know harvest it and reuse it when i make my sj4 again the reason i want to save the yeast it's the irish ale yeast and from what i've read i think it's going to go really well with this porter that i'm making my isolation porter so I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Would you still harvest the yeast even though there was a possibility of contamination? I'll give you a little bit more of a backstory. It's in a spare bathroom, but the bathroom is like never used. I mean, we haven't used that bathroom like for anything in forever. And the actual, it's like in an actual shower. And that shower I spray down like once a week with um, with uh, sanitizer spray. So, I mean, I feel like that's about as sanitary as it's going to get in my house. So, I feel like I should harvest the yeast. On the other chance, part of me is thinking, you know, there is a possibility that there could have been bacteria in there. And I think I might take the risk anyways just because it would be my first attempt at a sour beer. So... Some thoughts, and then also with there being a solid chance that this beer is going to be 8.1% again, I don't think any bacteria could really live in those conditions. Um, so I think we'll be fine. So that's that. Second or third thing, however you want to count it, I lost track. My mind is still like, it's like someone shook my brain. That's how, uh, oh, that's how hot those freaking peppers were, Justin. Damn. It's been like 20 minutes since I had the peppers, like a solid 20 minutes, and still, 
I, my mouth is on fire. And I have done the chocolate. I've done milk and literally just swirled it around my mouth. Damn, that was hot. Um, so, the next thing. I'm going to brew this weekend my favorite beer that I make. It's a homemade recipe. Uh, I love it. It's it's without a doubt the best beer that I make, in my opinion. Uh, I am making my Cascadian Dark Ale, or what I've always called it, a black IPA. Uh, the recipe is really simple, nothing too crazy about it. If you guys want, I'll probably go into it when I brew. But what's, uh, what's important about it is this is the first time ever I'm going to try doing it with a no sparge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put as much water in my uh, mash tun as I can. And then basically I'll heat all that water up to mash temp. I'll put it in and then I'll put all the grains in and I will let it sit for an hour, maybe 75 minutes. So hour, 75 minutes, depending on what I feel like. And then if I'm able to fit all of my water, so including my sparge water and my mash water in there, I won't put any more sparge water in there. If I can't, and I've got to put like another gallon in, what I plan on doing is I'll boil off a couple times. I normally I boil off about three times. This time I might do about six. And then I'll start draining it down. I'll start draining that. And once it gets drained down enough, I'll put in whatever remaining sparge water I need to at like 170 degrees and then go on from there. Because my igloo is one of those circular ones, I don't have to be too, too concerned about pouring in water and disturbing the grain bed because the grains, by the time I'm sparging, should have gone all the way to the bottom. So pouring a little extra warm water on the top shouldn't be a problem. Here's my rationale. I've been reading a lot of articles about the no sparge brewing and what everyone has agreed on is that it produces a better beer. Now the people who haven't brewed this way have said that's impossible. The science doesn't lead up to it. But everyone that's brewed it has said, no, seriously, it tastes a lot better. So I want to try it. Um, I've done fly sparging, and to me that's just a pain in the ass. Just to you know make sure your levels are staying the same and like watching it and hovering for a whole hour. I think it's a pain in the butt. Um, I've also done batch sparging, and to me, I just don't, I see the efficiency, but everybody's beer who has batch sparged or fly sparged, I still pick up a little bit of tannins. I mean, not a ton, not a ton. My, it's it's kind of intriguing. I always kind of joke and talk about how great um, uh, the Clements palettes are, but I think feel like, you know, I'm always talking about down about mine. I think that's the one thing I'm really good at. I can pick up astringent flavors really well. The off flavors I can pick up well, which is like a horrible curse to have. You know, who wants to be able to taste the really bad stuff and not taste all the really great stuff? Like the Clements can taste like all the amazing flavors and I can pick up like, hmm, you got an off vegetable taste in here. What the fuck? <laughs> why? Of all the skills to get, why would I get this skill? That is the most used. You know, there's no meaning to it. There's no joy. Mm. I can taste the stuff that makes beer taste like shit. No one's like, oh, I want that ability. <laughs> but it is what it is. So, um, oh, man, my nose is still running from those freaking peppers. So the idea is that I'm going to do a no sparge method and see how it works. Now, everybody has said your efficiency is most likely going to suffer. I'm not concerned about that because when I play around with my software, I am consistently getting above 80%. Now, granted, it has never gone higher than like 84, 85%. So, but still, it's way up there. I mean, from everything I've read, if you hit 85, like you're doing amazing. But if you're going to 85, you're also risking getting tannins in your beer, the stuff that makes it basically taste like shit. So I have decided that since my efficiency is so great, I am willing to take the chance and do the no sparge and lose a little bit of efficiency in hopes that it produces a better beer. Now what I have heard is a lot of people um, do this style, it's called the English style. Um, and the reason it's called the English style is because the English are the ones who invented like the party guile idea which is you know you use your first runnings for one beer then you basically 
put in a whole new set of mash water and run that off for another, and you have two different beers. So that's the backstory on that. But looking at this, it makes sense. Like the the water that has been sitting in the mash tun the longest is going to, in my opinion, impart most of the flavors of the beer. It might not get all of the sugars, but it'll get all the flavors. And seeing how I have no problem converting sugars and getting them out of my mash tun, I figure why not take the chance? There's a solid chance that it's going to cut down on my brew day because I won't have to really sparge. And if it produces a better beer, I'm all for it. Anything that's going to cut down on time and increase the end result, I'm okay with. To me, efficiency it's not that big a deal. I'm exceeding efficiency as is, so I can take a couple hits in that area. So that's what I'm thinking. If you guys have any questions, concerns, wonder where I'm getting this idea, let me know. I'm probably going to put a couple links below. I'm definitely going to put a link below about a guy called uh, Don Osborne. He did something like this, and it turned out really well. Um, he really liked the, the style and how his beer turned out. So, uh, yeah, hit me up. Any questions, concerns below, like, you know, like comment subscribe uh watch my past video where i almost have a heart attack from the peppers and uh yeah that is the story morning glory so i'm out i'm gonna finish drinking my beer and uh finish watching my breaking bad episode so um peace chicken grease boys and girls i'm out